Also, really typed Paul slash. We've got 29 viewers in the queue. Okay. So, so we're live. Are we? Yep. Okay. <laughs> so, welcome everybody um, to our Tech Talk, API Tech Talk. We've got Francois, who's our uh, chief architect. And today we're going to talk about SSO across mobile applications. Um, Fr Francois was just at a workshop we were doing uh, kind of close to CSA yesterday and uh, gave a presentation to, or more of a workshop um, on SSO across mobile applications. So it's a very uh, relevant topic right now, so we wanted to discuss it and uh, I would give Francois a chance to sort of introduce the topic and take some questions. We already got one through Twitter uh, last night, so um, don't be afraid to tweet your questions with the hashtag Layer7Live. Just hash Layer7Live. Okay. Uh, you can email us if uh, you know if you have a lengthy question that maybe might take more thought, or you can't stick around and wait for your question to be answered. Uh, be sure to email us at techtalk at layer7.com. Uh, you can address it to Francois or just you know Layer7, and we'll try to find the answer to that question. Um, also, if you're if you're you know in in the chat, just you can fire off your questions at any time. So, Francois, SSO across mobile applications. Hey, Steve. Hi. Good Are to you, be back. Yeah, it's good to have you. I think this is probably the third one you've done. Yeah, it's been a while. So, yeah, mobile uh, SSO across mobile applications. Uh, like you said, I, I was at uh, Cloud Security Alliance uh, yesterday in San Francisco. We had a presentation on that. Uh, there's definitely a lot of interest uh, in that topic right now. Uh, we're also in, in Barcelona at Mobile World Congress, and I think that, that those guys over there are also talking a lot about it. And it, it's, it's a very hot topic right now. <clears throat> and, um, you know, maybe as an introduction, I would say, why, why does SSO matter? I think that the big thing right now is that, you know, providers want to reach out to their audience. Their audience is increasingly on mobile devices. And, um, these these mobile users want good user experience, right? Yeah. If the user experience is not good, they're not going to stick around. So, user experience is really really um, critical to adoption of your service. So, if you want your service to be successful, you need good user experience on mobile devices. Right. And in order to get good user experience on mobile devices, you need to have uh, SSO is one component of that. Uh, and, and I think that one of the reasons for that is that, you know, entering, usually passwords on these mobile devices all the time is just a pain in the ass, right? For sure. It's, it's, it's a really big thing. I think there's two reasons for that. So, first of all, the input gathering on these devices is just not super good, right? It's, it's kind of a trade-off that, that we're willing to make in, in, in exchange for having always on, you know, wherever I am access to the data, right? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to forego having a, a really good input gathering interface in order to get that in exchange. Um, so in, entering passwords is difficult. And, and the other reason is that... Plus we want to switch through applications all, all the time yeah. while, while we're on our mobile device, right? You switch your applications and then there's a lot of applications. So yeah. there's just so many passwords that, that you can remember at any given time, right? Yeah. My brain can only remember you know, so many passwords, and that's fewer passwords than services I subscribe to on my mobile platform. So there's no way I can remember all these passwords. And the thing is that when I'm when I'm sitting at my workstation, that password that I can't remember is just way easier for me to access than when I'm riding my bike with one hand trying to remember the password. Just, you know, it's just, it's just bad user experience. Um, so yeah, I think that that's, that's why single sound matters so much. Right. And so, um, what does it have to do with OAuth? Is it because it's the APIs that are... Yeah, so it has to do with OAuth because we're talking about mobile single sign-on, uh, so, so mobile applications consuming APIs, right? You, you, you have a bunch of mobile applications on your mobile device, they consume APIs, and you need to authenticate those API calls. And that's, that's done with OAuth. So that's the connection between mobile SSO uh, and OAuth. Right, okay. And so uh, what does it have to do with Layer 7 Yeah. at this point? So what, what does mobile SSO have to do with Layer 7? You know, people these days come to us for API management. 
Right. Uh, but the API is just one side of what a lot of our customers are, are doing, right? The API is on, on the provider side, and then they have mobile applications that consume these APIs. So we end up in situations where our customers are building an overall solution that includes API access control, and right. this is definitely our you know specialty. Uh, but those applications, those those APIs are consumed by applications, and and the same project includes both the client side and uh, the server side. Right. So we end up we end up being pulled in these projects, and and people ask us to accommodate this mobile single sign on as part of our API management solution right now. Right. So these are both externally facing applications and internal applications that yeah. employees are using, but also these are. Um, op like openly published APIs? So, yeah, si single sign-on matters to any mobile users. Right. But what we do see a lot of is, um, for example, the enterprise reaching out to its, wor its workforce through mobile applications and, and distributing a set of applications that targets these users. So, and, and that, that gets into, you know, mobile a single sign-on across applications within a domain as opposed to single sign-on across domains, right? Right. So if, if you're an enterprise and I, I, I'm working uh, and you're distributing a bunch of applications for me, it makes sense for me to have a single sign-on experience across the set of applications that you make available to me. Right. So the key then is user experience but security. How do you balance the user experience and the security aspect of? Yeah, that that's that's difficult. So remember how uh, you know I, I always bring it back to user experience because I think on mobile device uh, uh, user experience is sacred. Right. So as a user, I, I it's bad user experience for me to have to type in a bunch of passwords all the time. Right. But what's also bad user experience is if I don't have the feeling that the provider is not taking um, uh, sufficient precaution in identifying right. me before giving me my data, right? Right. I mean, if I if I download an application and, and I don't never have to sign on and I get information that I feel should be private to me, yeah. that is also a bad user experience. So you, you you can't implement SSO in such a way that you know you're skipping authentication when it's actually required. Right. Okay. So it's, it's it's a tricky balance for sure. You know, you want to make it easy for people, but in, in many situations, you also want to make it safe. Right. Okay. I also just wanted to. We got a couple comments that maybe the video is a little bit blurry. Yeah. So we go. We could take a, a maybe second. We'll take a, move the camera a little quick bit. Quick look at the video. Uh, just remind people to send in their questions. Um, I think we'll take a stab at the the, the one from Jay Cyrus too. Um, Sent that one in or, or last night, I think. There you go. Hopefully Jay that. Cyrus too. So um, we're talking SSO across mobile applications, of course. And he asks, uh, how does it change if the data is PCI or PII? And these are compliance issues, right? Yeah. So or even GLIBA. I'm I'm not familiar with that one, but I, I'm I'm guessing that those are all uh, compliance issues, like you said, PCI. Uh, and, and, and things like uh, you know credit card information and things like that. I mean, those are those are extremely important things that I'm not sure if that um, is is directly related to single sign-on in the sense that you know single sign-on does not mean you don't have you know encryption of data, nor doesn't doesn't mean that you don't have it. Right? That they're kind of like two separate things. Right. Of course. Um, as part of being signed on, if, if that means you have easier access to information, uh, then then I guess it, it could be indirectly related. But uh, yeah, the the more um, certification requirements, the more sensitive the data is. I think that the the, the shorter the sessions should right. be, right? So from a single sign-on experience, yeah, I guess that could affect the user experience, and 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 maybe if a user feels that. You know his data is, is is extremely sensitive. Let's say my mobile application. So maybe for my mobile application, my mobile mobile device, I'll be a little bit more accepting as a user uh, uh, to sign on every time I turn it on, as opposed to maybe my Twitter client. Right. So 
I guess that that that's the connection, and that also gets back to user experience, right? Sure. This is my banking information. I don't want to make it too don't make it too easy for me because what if somebody takes my mobile device and and, and has access to right. that information? Okay, so. Um, Jay Cyrus too. Hopefully that answers your question. Hopefully you join us this morning. Uh, if it doesn't, you know, feel free to tweet in a follow up or chat in the window. Um, but yeah, thanks. So make sure you keep those questions coming or comment. And comment. See strawberry jam there. Thanks for telling us about the video, <laughs> strawberry jam. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, question: Can I use SAML for federating authentication across applications on a mobile device? Uh, SAML, SAML uh, federating authentication. Yeah, so if you are going to federate authentication uh, in order to achieve SSO, uh, you know SAML is, is definitely you know probably the most accepted, the most uh, implemented standard out there, and <clears throat> I would say that that. You know, SAML is, is, is a bit heavy for mobile device, right? That's that's one of the reasons why OpenID Connect as an alternative is is has a lot of popularity right now. So SAML is still XML, it's, it's really bloated, XML digital signatures and things like that. But it, it's still applicable because um, when you're using SAML to do SSO, when you're using SAML in mobile applications, it's not like you have to include a SAML uh, assertion in, in each API request. The SAML is just used at the beginning of a session to, to when when the session is created. Instead of, of prompting a user for using password, the application just passes a, a SAML assertion. And uh, as a matter of fact, there there's a, so so yesterday at CSA we presented a, we proposed an architecture. Uh, uh, for doing uh, single sign-on across mobile applications, and and one of the the ways that we were suggesting people should do that is to have uh, uh, this thing where you have a SAML assertion on a device that's shared across a, a group of applications. We were actually using in our example a, a JWT token, but but SAML is very analog and, and could also be used. And if each application would would get its own access token by presenting a SAML assertion to the OAuth authorization server. Okay. So when an application does that, it doesn't prompt you for credentials. It has a SAML assertion and it doesn't involve you. So so even though there's a handshake that happens, you as a user are not uh, involved. And so that provides a single sign-on experience. Oh, okay. So I've heard some, some chatter on Twitter <clears throat> or discussion that maybe OAuth 2.0 might spell the death of SAML, but it sounds more like OpenID <laughs> yeah. might be. So can you see a day where, where SAML doesn't, you know, is sort of killed off by OpenID Connect? Well, or I, I think that as a know, standard. Yeah, I think as, as you know, OpenID Connect is still in, in, in a draft uh, uh, specification right, right now, so it's not as mature as SAML. Um, a lot of enterprises have made uh, investment uh, in, in SAML-related technology, so right. it's probably not going away anytime soon. But if you look at which of the two standards has the most momentum right now, I would say that OpenID Connect seems to be definitely the newcomer that that you know is definitely sexier. It's 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 definitely more uh, suited, better suited for mobile applications because it's compact. Uh, Are they doing the same job? They're, they're kind of doing the same job, right? You take a SAML assertion, you take an ID token, they're both signed claims. Right. Uh, one is uh, uh, in XML, the other one is JSON. One has an XML digital signature, the other one has a JWS signature. One is huge and the other one is tiny, right? Right. But but if you compare a SAML assertion with a, 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 an ID token, you've got something very analog. And then if you compare SAML web browser SSO maybe to uh, an open ID connect handshake, you also get something very analog. Okay, so uh, Manish, or Manish, sorry if, if I'm uh, butchering your name, but it looks like Manish says, SAML works nice for web apps and custom apps that you have control of. How do you deal with SSO and shrink-wrapped apps? Shrink-wrapped? I'm not sure, what, what, what do you mean by shrink-wrapped Manish? Um, SAML works nice for web apps and custom apps that you have control of. Uh, yeah, definitely. If, if, if you're going to, as part of your app, uh, uh, enable SSO. Apps from iTunes, basically. Is what saying. Apps from iTunes, okay. 
from the from the from from the, from the Apple from store. the App Store. So so from if it's not store. your app, uh, then obviously you have much less of an opportunity to provide a single sign-on experience to your user because it's not your app. <coughs> There are um, things that are built in. So you're talking about iTunes. I'm, I'm assuming the, the, the iOS App Store. Um, so, for example, in iOS version six, there's you know the the Facebook Connect Facebook login is actually built into the right. platform. So if you're looking at this from the perspective of, of consumer apps, then uh, using something that's built into the platform uh, makes sense. But but if it's not your app, you don't really have control over that. So uh, I'm not sure where we're going with this, but uh, yeah. So maybe Manish, if you want to just clarify a little bit exactly what you mean. Yeah. Um, and then a dubious dude <laughs> from on Twitter is asking. So I will just say to Manish, if if you you didn't get the answer to your question, um, do us a favor and just maybe rephrase it into the chat, and uh, Fr Franco can take another stab at answering it for you. Um, and then a dubious dude on Twitter says, do you have a link to your proposal for SAML across mobile devices? Yeah. I guess, I mean, do we have content? Yeah, so a, uh, a dubious dude, uh, my reply to you would be that, um, so yesterday uh, we, we did propose an architecture uh, um, in, in my CSA talk. And um, we actually posted those slides on SlideShare yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So if you go to Twitter slash layer seven and then you go back in the list, I think last night you, yeah. you posted it. was around 7.30 last night. We tweeted Franco's mm -hmm. slides from his workshop talk at CSA yesterday. So uh, you're obviously on Twitter now. So if you go just to the layer seven Twitter. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and take a look at the last, the second to last slide and then a few slides before that, it, it, it yeah. really gets down to that, that overall architecture. In fact, what we'll, what we'll just reply and we'll copy the link and send you the link right to that slide deck. Thanks for your question. Yeah, you just keep them coming and, and let us know if uh, you have any follow up questions. And then Manish is saying um, he sort of clarified: Are many application providers moving towards, excuse me, using Facebook Connect for apps mm -hmm. from the Apple App Store? For example, I want to I want to use Konos to connect uh, on a prem data store. But then there are many other enterprise apps in the same category. Yeah. So when you do an application that that does like a Facebook Connect on 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 the client side, then and that's that's something that that seems to uh, uh, confuse people a little bit. Uh, when when your app leverages that that Facebook Connect um, handshake uh, that's built into the platform, the app on the client device will know who you are based on based your Facebook on, credentials. Yes, right. but remember that this app is probably consuming an API somewhere else. Right. And and at the API server side, yeah. they don't know who you are. They did not authenticate you. The app authenticated. Right. So that's that's a different situation. Okay. Right? So so you still need to have some sort of, of either trusted identity forwarding to, to the API or, or some mechanism that that would most likely be required on the API side that, that, that requires to know who your user is, and that's that's a, a different situation. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully that answers your question, Manish. Manish? But another thing, I think Manish is, is, is uh, talking about something that, that's very important. Um, and, and, and again, I, that, that's also in, in, uh, in that, that presentation from yesterday, but in order to do SSO on a mobile device, some, like for example, on iOS, you need to have a coordination between applications. And that's yeah. that's where the big challenge is because the difference between web application and, and, and mobile or any native application for that matter is that these applications work in isolation from one another, right? right. So <clears throat> if, if you're on your browser and you go to gmail.google.com, right? Yeah. You're gonna authenticate once and there's gonna be a cookie in your browser. Yeah. Now, if you go to docs.google.com, you don't have to authenticate again. Right. right, if you're and in the same browser. If you're in the same browser. Right. And the reason for that is that you've got a cookie that, that's a domain cookie, star the Google lock on. Yeah. The, the cookie applies to that. But on a mobile device, if you're using native applications, those are separate applications. They don't, they don't share cookies between themselves. They don't share access token. And that, that's, that's why 
In order to do mobile uh, SSO across applications, you need to have some sort of coordination between apps, unless you're using like. So a, how does that work though? If well, apps are being developed independently yeah. of one another. So so on iOS, the the mechanism to to you know when you switch between applications on your iOS, the way that works is that each application registers its own URL scheme. So you know a URL scheme is like HTTP colon slash slash. So that's a URL scheme. Yeah. Uh, so if I build application A, I can say app A colon slash slash. That's my URL scheme. Right. So if somebody calls that, it switches to my application. URL scheme. Scheme. Not URL scheme. That's right. <laughs> Is that a Russian? <laughs> That's what it sounded like to me. <laughs> URL scheme. Yeah. URL so, scheme, sorry. Yeah. So so by applications each registering their own URL schemes, that allows you to pass the scope between applications and it allows through the URL to pass information between uh, things. So, right. so before iOS 6, when you did um, when you did a delegate authentication to Facebook before it was built into the platform, the way that it worked is that you you switch to a, a URL scheme for that Facebook application where you already had a session, and then it came back to your application with a token. Uh, but that has some security uh, uh, risks associated to it, right. and it's I, I would argue that that's not appropriate for enterprise uh, data. Okay. Um... So we've got two questions. We're going to get back to Manish. He's uh, he's kind of expanded a little bit more. Okay. But we've also got one from David Reed on Twitter. So he asks, how how easy is it to use Layer Seven Secure, secure Span to act as an STS for SSO to a new admin console? We're launching in a few months, so existing customer. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, it is easy. Um, so. David A. Reed, uh, get in touch with us, and uh, we'd love to help you with that. Uh, so, Layer Seven Secure Span is is deployed as a gateway. So, you, instead of having to you know code all of this, it's basically you know draw a drop in solution that you configure. And in order to do single sign on, uh, uh, we do have you know full support for SAML, for OpenID Connect, for OAuth, and all the things that would be required on, on the IDP side in order to implement uh, a single sign-on. If, if your solution involves any sort of APIs uh, and you want to do single sign-on for consuming these APIs, you know, we have a very uh, strong solution for that. And thanks for your question, David. Yeah. So hopefully that answers things. Um, David. David Reed. from Edmonton. Yeah, from Edmonton. Uh, Scotsman. Uh, so yeah, if if you've got a follow up question, just tweet that in as well. Uh, but hopefully, Francois answered it. Um, and Manish again says, I think you're getting the gist of my question now. So what do you see as the emergence reference architecture uh, to support SSO for native applications? Is it this URL scheme? Yeah. You mentioned? Okay. So okay. let's let's dig a little bit more uh, into this this URL scheme thing. So. Uh, so, so this is what happens. So, so, so the URL schemes allows different applications to switch between one another, and and it also allows applications to uh, uh, pass information to one another. So, imagine you're signed on to an enterprise application, you have a session with it, and you're starting another application, and and they're isolated, right? Uh, uh, and and you don't have a session with that second one, but you want that application is going to piggyback on the session on the first one. In order to avoid having to prompt you from for credentials, right? So, URL schemes allows you to have that coordination between applications. Hmm. But earlier, okay. I was talking about the security limitation of that, and and this is what happens. So on iOS, there's nothing that will enforce that a URL scheme is unique to an application. So. I also okay. back to my slides I was talking earlier. That I've got an actual quote from the Apple website that that touches on that. So any application, you could be an application, a malicious application developer, and you can register a URL scheme that you know very well is associated to a well-known enterprise application, right? Because you want to interject yourself in that redirection, right? And basically, if, if the token is passed like that between applications, you could steal it. So that URL scheme by so what would be itself, an example, just as a user, like an Instagram kind of thing, or are we talking 
inside the, the enterprise. Yeah, let's say you've got two enterprise applications, uh, uh, one with which you have a session yeah. and, and another one which you don't. And then you're you're switching between uh, uh, the one that doesn't have a session to the one that does have a session, right. so that that application can pass back the token to that other application that needs it. Okay, you can get in between. Yeah, that. but right. if if you've got another application that registered the same URL scheme, there's no way on iOS to say, well, this application, not that application, is going to catch this uh, redirection. Yeah. So somebody could steal your token, and I, I, the solution that I propose is one where you can still use the URL schemes to pass the scope between applications, but the actually exchange of, of either a token or, or some, some sort of shared secret that, that's used to bootstrap the, 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 the session is, is something that should use another mechanism. Right, okay. And on iOS, there's something called a, a keychain. So each application has a keychain. And if you have multiple applications that come from a same domain and they're same by, signed by the same developer key, they can have something called a, a shared keychain group. Right. And that would allow application to have a safe storage mechanism that allows them to pass information between one another. So you use a URL scheme to redirect, but the actual sensitive information is passed through a right. shared keychain group. OK, is it similar to Android, you know? I don't really know much about right. Android, so I'm just curious. Okay, I guess I guess largely developers develop for iOS first. I know I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say that. I no. I just happen to be more familiar with right. iOS. But okay, so David Reed uh, kind of followed up. He says just to expand, we are an L7 customer and in the process of developing the enterprise service bus mid tier. We're launching a new mobile app soon and need to provide SSO for the admin console side of things. For the admin console side of things. Um, Okay, so maybe you're talk, talking about uh, a single sign-on for the secure span policy manager or something like that, the, the, the layer 7 policy manager. Um, so that, that's something that's not built into the, the policy manager. Uh, you can configure your policy manager with a certificate so that you don't have to provide uh, a, a password when you sign in. Uh, so that might be something that's helpful for you, but usually when we say single sign-on, we say single sign-on across multiple applications, right? So maybe we could uh, email David or something, or maybe yeah. dig in a little deeper. Yeah. Um, so Matt McClarty also has a question from Bob Dulcy on Facebook. Can the SecureSpan gateway act as a, an OAuth token provider? Yes, absolutely. The Layer 7 gateway is probably the, more, the most sophisticated OAuth implementation out there. So we, we implement the OAuth authorization server, the OAuth resource server. So as part of an, uh, uh, an API management uh, infrastructure solution that we provide, you have uh, all of these components built into the gateway. Uh, and we also implement that outside of just the scope of API management. Uh, yeah, that's that's built into the gateway. It's also very flexible. So we provide OAuth uh, implementation to which you plug in your APIs, you plug in your existing IDPs, and and, and you know people use it to do OAuth with multi-factor authentication, with with strong authentication. So it's very flexible, very powerful. Uh, uh, so Bob, we definitely got you covered there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Bob well, Dolce. Okay. So we had one other question from, sorry, let me just flip back. Uh, uh, Rob Bores, or Rob Bores, sorry about the names. Um, what about shared cookies as alternative to OpenID and SAML? Yeah, I mean, for, for mobile applications, usually you talk about access tokens and not cookies, but they're very, very similar right. concepts, right? Uh, it's just how you get the cookie and how you get the access token is, is, is is uh, um, based on different standards. So, yeah, um, in the solution that I describe in my slides, I, I have a mechanism where you've got uh, an identity delegate application on the mobile device that takes the user through an open ID connect handshake, and then you get this ID token, and this ID token can be used by each application to uh, to get an access token for that ID token. So in that when you do it that way, each application gets its access token. And 
of course, that's a little bit more complicated than what you suggest, where you say, well, why don't, why don't you just get one access token and have it shared across applications? I agree it's, it's, it's simpler, but it's, it's also more limited because um, you don't have the ability on the API side to distinguish between which client application is, is calling the API and from, um, from uh, an entitlement, you know, a fine grained entitlement management perspective, you also lose the ability to revoke authorization of one of the applications on your device and, and still let the other applications right. continue to, to, to use API on your behalf. So you, you lose a little bit of flexibility when you do that. It's not as powerful a solution. It is probably simpler to implement from a, a, a client application developer perspective because you know only one application needs to implement OAuth to get the access token. The other one's just going to share the same access token. Right. Um, OK, great. So uh, Rob, Rob Ors, um, Hopefully that answers your question. And again, if if it, you know things aren't exactly clear, feel free to kind of rephrase things or add on. Uh, thanks so much for the questions, by the way, guys. Uh, and I also just wanted to mention you reference your slides. Um, you can you can get Francois' slide deck from his talk yesterday at CSA. Uh, if you're on Twitter, we tweeted them. Um, you know, it's like the fourth or fifth entry from last night. Um, it actually says, you know, my slides, or Francois' slides from CSA yesterday. Or if you're in SlideShare, uh, you can go to the Layer 7, search for Layer 7, and it'll be the, the, the most recent entry. And uh, you can have a look at the slides there. So, um, let's see, just another question, looks like about, um, is a VPN connection from corporate mobile device to on-premise a good option for reducing yeah. the need for single sign-on? That actually, that same question came up yesterday. So okay. VPN connections is not an, internal, an alternative to SSO. And you know, a VPN connection provides a secure pipe. It doesn't do application level access control. So it's 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 completely different solution. A VPN connection is more something that you use to, to encrypt a pipe and something like that. And I would argue that a VPN connection is, is probably a very bad idea on mobile devices. Imagine as an enterprise, if I've got thousands of, of, of users uh, that each have a VPN connection, which is basically a back door to my enterprise, walking around everywhere in the city. That, that's just, it just seems wrong to me. Uh, I always advocate uh, people to instead uh, uh, implement you know, secure connections from the device to the perimeter in front of the API. It's more discriminate and it's more secure. Okay. Um, any other questions? Keep them coming. Uh, we've we've you know got a few minutes left, about ten minutes. Um, so don't be shy. Uh, and we've got some really cool new um, layer seven stickers. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, we've got a REST one. We've got a API one. We've got some JSON looking ones. Um, Jose, who's off camera, uh, our designer, designed them. We've got one on the back of this one. Um, so next person asks ask a question that is actually OpenID or SAML or SSO related. We'll send you a sticker or maybe one of each. Uh, I don't have them with me. We should have had them. Um, <laughs> so uh, anything you want to add? Um, just maybe one last thing before, because because I know that you know everybody seems to be asking about OAuth and. Right. and I feel that last week there was a little bit of an incident with Facebook around OAuth. That's right. Yeah. And it just it just enrages me that that you know because somebody so the incident was Facebook was hacked. Yeah, Facebook was hacked. It, 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 it's something that you know wasn't really. Uh, I, I think a lot of people were aware that of the fact that um, there are some OAuth implementation out there that are not you know done in a way that that's fully secure. Right. Uh, I, I just I just want to say that you know don't throw OAuth under the bus because somebody doesn't use it properly. I think that that's well, that was that's the claim. Wrong reaction. Yeah, basically, basically people OAuth was like, isn't secure enough. Yeah, because Facebook is hacked, it means that OAuth is broken or it's not right. secure enough. And, okay. and, and you hear that all the time. And I would say no. I mean, you you're, you, you should implement OAuth. It is the standard for API access control. You should do it in a way that's secure. OAuth by itself is neither secure nor insecure. Of right. course, you, you have to take normal precautions 
the same way uh, as you protect any API uh, uh, when you implement OAuth. So don't throw OAuth under the bus. Facebook messed up their implementation. It's not the standard's fault. Uh, OAuth, in my opinion, is still very, very uh, uh, critical, um, especially for what we're talking about today. Is the was the Burger King hack anything to do with that, or is that just simply bad password stuff? Uh, I think Burger King was was different. I'm not sure if it was uh, related to OAuth. I, 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 I'm I'm just, I was just curious. I don't know yeah. either. Sure. Um, okay. Uh, Eel Park wants a sticker. Uh, do you have a question for Franco? <laughs> Uh, yeah, any last questions, go ahead, throw them out there. Um, and I think, you know, I, I think we had a really good attendance. It was one of, one of the highest ones yet. Awesome. So, Francois, you are the golden boy. All right. Um, I'm just giving everybody a chance to get their thoughts together. If there is kind of a final question, I'm just going to scan Twitter once, go through the stream. Going once, going uh, twice. Going once, going twice. Um, Cyrus likes your shirt. Thank you. Thanks, Cyrus. This shirt is not for sale. I mean, no. <laughs> yeah, we might have to design some uh, OAuth shirts that look like that. Uh, I know Angie Gray wants one. Right. Okay. So I think we're just going to say one last question. One, one last oh. question. Where? Are we still debating OAuth 1.0a and 2.0? Uh, I think that's pretty much done, right? Uh, all the new implementations out there are going with OAuth 2. Um, and that, I, I, I think that that's been going on for uh, quite a while now. Yeah, OAuth 2 is a done deal. Uh, that I don't see much you know, justification. Is for, it a done deal? Yeah, oh yeah, okay. it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's done. So any new implementation should definitely use OAuth 2. Uh, if you were not sure, uh, I, I would just uh, default on that. Yeah. OK. So I've lost my, okay. So SP, are we still debating OAuth 1 or 2? Uh, SP, if you want to send us your address and your name, uh, you could direct message us if you want to be private on Twitter, or you can send it to the email, which is techtalk.layer7.com, um, and we'll send you a few of those stickers because uh, you, you asked the final question. So again, we're just going to say thank you so much. Uh, we'll be having another Tech Talk towards the end of March. Stay tuned for details. Um, yeah, email us at Tech Talk there. Awesome. Um, thanks again, Franco. Nice thanks. to see you again. Jose is off camera. Thanks for uh, handling thanks, all Jose. the feed. And uh, we'll say thanks one more time. Talk to you in March. Uh, oh, one, one more quick question. Oh, GMO Todd. GMO Todd. And he's a friend of the show. I've seen you here before. So thanks for coming back. Hey, GMO Todd. I hear OAuth 2 is very complex. Is OAuth is 1.0 still recommended for the enterprise? That's no, a good question. It's the other way around. Uh, people people always complain that uh, OAuth 1, uh, or, or actually OAuth 2 was kind of um, a response to OAuth 1 being a little bit difficult to right. implement, especially on the client side with those HMAC signatures all over the place. So I'd argue OAuth 2 is, is more simple. OAuth 2 is also. Uh, more complete, it, it, it addresses a wider range of use cases. So OAuth 2 is definitely the recommended uh, version of OAuth for the enterprise. It caters much better to the enterprise. As a matter of fact, most of the complaints about OAuth 2 come from you know, the website of the, the standard committees which, which feel that OAuth 2 is too enterprise driven and not web driven enough. So uh, definitely stick to OAuth 2 uh, in the enterprise. Okay. So hopefully that helps and answers your question. Um, oh, more, more. Another question. They, have, they come in flurries at the end. Um, Brian seventy six T two says, "Is OS insecure on mobile because of the need to use implicit grant and lack Ooh. of client secret?" Yeah, that's a very good, uh, very good point, Brian. Um, so yes, you are correct in a way. Uh, if you are going to use the implicit grant type on OAuth. It will rely on a redirection between applications, and therefore there is um, there is the risk of, of a malicious application introducing itself uh, into that handshake. Um, so you don't have to use the implicit grant type, of course, uh, with OAuth though. Uh, and and if you are dealing uh, with a situation where uh, an application is is trusted by the user. 
Uh, and, and what I mean by that is that, you know, if I download the official Twitter application, I know this comes from Twitter. If I started this application and it asks me directly for my username and password on Twitter, I'll be okay with that. Yeah. yeah, if I download Hootsuite, uh, I won't want to give my, my username and password for Twitter on it. So the same thing applies to a, a domain of applications on mobile device. So if as an enterprise I'm reaching out to my workforce by providing them applications, it, it, it is acceptable from a user experience to give my credentials to the application directly as part of the OAuth handshake. So instead of using implicit in that case, you're using something like the password grant type, resource, resource owner password credential, and then you, uh, you no longer have that, that, that risk of, uh, of a malicious application introducing itself in the handshake and, and stealing an access token. Right. But in general, you are correct that um, uh, on, on mobile applications, those clients end up being um, public clients as opposed to confidential clients, and that's uh, a little bit less secure. But okay, so stick to the grant type that's more secure, like password. Right. Uh, okay, so I just want to say, Brian, thanks for the question. Uh, Guillermo, hopefully, you know you got the answers you're looking for. And one last final call for questions. Last time we got two. So. We'll never get out of here. No, but that's okay. What time's your flight? <laughs> <laughs> I've got some fun. You got some time. Okay. Oh, there we go. No, that's an end. No, that's a promoted tweet. Okay. So thanks, guys. Uh, we really appreciate it. Hopefully, you got a lot of your, you know, you learned a lot, had your questions answered, and um, you know, watch our Twitter feed for details on the, the next tech talk, which should be uh, towards the end of March. Thanks very much. Francois, thanks again. So long, guys.